Okay, good day and welcome to the Student StarCraft AI Tournament 2014. With the semi-finals we have got LitaBot by Martin Royakers versus IceBot, programmed by IceLab in Japan. And the second match will be Xim by Thomas Veda versus the University of Alberta Bot by Dave Churchill. Okay, so the first game will be on and I'll talk somewhat about an intro later. We have got Litabot versus Icebot coming up. And we are now uh, having the round of eight, round of four, and finals and third, fourth place match in January and February. So now this is the semi finals. We have got Litabot, which is by all means a rather cheesy affair, and we have got Icebot from Japan. And Icebot is what I would like to describe as the most round, most human-like bot there is. But in the round of 42, this little brother here, Litabot, ended first. And that is no small feat. I have said it's a cheesy little bugger, and that it is, but it is a very decent little bugger, and it has been programmed with absolute astounding attention to detail. It can do various rushes. It either does a in-base barracks pressure on bigger maps, or it can do a bunker rush, or a proxy barracks, or a combination of all those. And this little man, Icebot, is, well, how shall we say, the most human. Uh, and it possesses some more advanced later game strategies. The question is, will it get to that before it gets pressured by marines? And if I am not mistaken, the first marine is on his way and we have a shootout. Pew 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 pew. Oh, a draw! Oh, that is exceptional. That happened too often. But the wall has been broken and it is now two marines versus nil marines. Icebot is building more. And it's also building. Oh, it's got a lot of SCVs, and it's got a factory coming up. So if it can get a Vulture up and hold off these Marines with SCVs and Marines of its own, that it will be in an okay position. And Litabot has a very low SCV saturation, but it's got enough. It can build Marines from two racks and the, the occasional supply depot. But back to the battle. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four Marines, and the factory is done. Okay, where are the units? No, no. Okay, this will be a little bit dire because these Marines are uncontested except by SUVs, and they even micro to evade those. One kill there, Rex not building, all the SUVs come off the line and they get killed and do they get a couple of marine kills a good micro they should but it doesn't seem like Icebot has the good micro to do that and although all of them keep running back they 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 get it done nothing building here and in the barracks nothing so now we've got about 10 marines 1, 2, 3, 4, 11 ish, 12 with more floating in, as you can see on the minimap, and the base is under fire, so this base will be forfeit. Still nothing building here, and nothing here, and back in the base of Litabots, we've got two barracks pushing out marines left and right, and some depots, and here a modest saturation, but hey, it's enough. So there goes the command center, and poof! There is the factory under attack, and wait for it, there it goes, kaboom. Okay, so all nice and dandy, first finisher of the round of 42 takes the first game in the semi-finals versus Icebot, but here is a, um, well, it's not really a big flaw because the enemy is incapacitated, it won't do anything more, but it's still got two buildings here. And the victory conditions of this tournament are to either kill all enemy structures or um, play out a full 19 minutes 
and then be considered victor on points. On what points? On those old Starcraft points, namely economy, killing of units balance and killing of structures balance and that goes into an arcane formula and something will pop out. By all means, Leaderbot would have won by now, but um, Icebot doesn't GG. So, what do we do? We speed up the game a little. Because the SUV saturation is going up and gas is being mined. So, what have we here? Oh, a factory. And let's make it a little bit faster because a factory being constructed is not all that interesting. Uh, factory, minerals being mined, gas being mined. Oh, there, oh, there come some more marines. Slow down just a tad. And a starport and marines. Okay, so three. Oh, look, and the barracks has gone on a scouting mission. And it seems to be even... Oh, that is cute. I've never seen that yet. I've watched about 10 games of Icebot. And I have yet to see... I've not seen anything yet. Look, it's it's evading those marines. It's, it's floating in the direction of the enemy. And if it sees a marine, it backs off. Fortunately, these are uh, Leaderbot marines, which do not fire on... Whatever. They are programmed to infiltrate the main base, which they are doing, have done with success, have neutralized the main base, but hey, too bad. Okay, so what's going on here? Nothing at the factory, nothing at the starport, barracks, oh, this one is, oh, it's building a wraith. How cute. SCV saturation has stabilized, it's got a decent economy, and we've got a wraith. Where is it going? It's going straight for the... Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So, for those of you unfamiliar with Leaderbot, Lita, um, L-E-T-A, or Shin Sang Mun, is a Korean pro, pro gamer, or I should say ex-pro gamer, as he does no longer play, which is a shame, because uh, Yellow has reinstalled a Star League of his own, the Kong Du Star League, you can find that on Team Liquid, and Sonic has um, basically revived the OSL with big prize money, so that's another good thing indeed. And many of the old pro gamers are coming back, but Lita, Shenseng Moon, was always very good with Wraiths, and uh, Martin Royakers, the programmer of uh, Lita Bot, told me that that is where the bot gets its name from. The Marines are just filing by and doing nothing at all, except perhaps playing cards here, and this poor SCV is doomed to finish the bunker on its own. Uh, the bunker, the depot. So, this is the last depot. Pew, 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 some burning damage, actually contributing to the speed, and the second SCV, arri SCV Wraith arrived, and it's GG. Okay, so first game goes to a liter bot, and we now move on to the second match. This is a best of three, uh, by the way, so whoever wins two games uh, wins and goes on to the finals of the Student StarCraft AI Tournament 2014. Oh golly, slow down, slow down. Now, two SCVs mining, two SCVs loading. And we've got now three SCVs mining, and this is a liter bot. I know because um, for the colors, and ice bot in the yellow. This is something else. Um, the previous game, liter bot carried out a in base to barracks pressure build, and this looks like a shenanigan build. So, ice bot is the most well-rounded bot, but it is not really intelligent in that sense that it says, oh well, I'm playing Lita bot, which is a cheesy bot, and last game I got pressure, so let's play safe. No, let's not do that. What shall we do instead? We will build a depot first. Good. And Lita bot, hey, let's build a barracks in place with the command center, so it can't expand, and we've got some marines almost in his face, which is good. Okay. But, yada yada yada, oh no, we need more SCVs because, hey, we just missed that. Scouting bot will find the enemy, 
and oh look cute Lita bot sends an SUV of its own after it will which will cripple its build because it's now only got two SUVs mining and what kind of pressure can you put off on to SUV economies this is Icebot building a barracks why here oh yes I assume yeah it said, well, we've got the choke here, and we've got all this space here, we can build a base, and no one can shell our base with tanks or whatever. And we've got a bunker, and the SCVs have been killed by SCVs or ice bots, so it seems, but the marines are getting some fire, and now they're in the bunker, but it gets taken down. That is actually pretty decent by Icebot, but there are three SUVs out, uh, three marines out, and SUVs are falling and nothing is building here because there is no money, no one is mining anymore. So it's now four marines versus four SUVs, and are there any more marines coming? We'll keep an eye on that. Let's watch the battle, no SUVs can't micro down marines even if they are controlled by the most brilliant AI and there comes another marine so let's speed it up a bit uh, we've got one more SCV which is driving around in circles in the base of Alita bots and those five six marines are killing the base and yep chuk 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 what's happening now nothing's happening now it said, well, okay, oh golly, yeah, it was out of supply, and victory. Okay, that is weird. Let me check with the tournament admin, Mr. Break. Yes, Litabot has been awarded the victory, and <laughs> the replay was cut short, in order to save time on the broadcast, I believe. Okay, good. So, Litabot takes out Icebot 2-0 and moves on to the final of the Student StarCraft AI Tournament 2014. Now we will move on to the next match, which is XIMP by Thomas Vader versus University of Alberta Bot by Dave Churchill. And it is a, a PvP, and in the blue we've got XIMP, Thomas Vader, and we've got in the right corner Dave Churchill with the University of Alberta Bot. And you might have guessed. Dave Churchill is from the University of All Better, although he isn't participating as a student. I don't know why, perhaps he graduated. And um, Thomas Veda is from the Comenius University of Bratislava in Slovakia. And this will prove to be an interesting game too, because this a little simp bot by Thomas Veda ended up joined first with Litabot on top of the round of 42 round robin bracket and was only declared sent because um, Thomas Veda is not competing as a student but as something else. Another very good programmer, programmer it seems. Okay, that mispronunciation of programmer is actually accurate here because these are very good bots and very good programmers behind them but I'm sorry I won't try to do it again. So what have we here? We've got a forge first from Thomas Vader's Ximp and the University of Alberta is going gate first. Okay, and one gate, money for another, two gates. So it's going for some two gate pressure perhaps. And here and there it's building SCVs, it's got 12 and 10 here so it's all not too different, but let's see how it will pan out. We've got a cannon, and make no mistake, these bots have been programmed by um, students of artificial intelligence, and that means they are slightly better than um, the usual StarCraft AI bots, which come with the CD or the digital file if you so choose to buy that. The downside is that they use quite a bit of memory. The original StarCraft could run on about a 128, uh, so you needed about 256 for XP and StarCraft together, and it was all fine and dandy. I tried to run um, Icebot on my modest 2GB 
RAM old machine thingy and it didn't like it very much I can tell you so if you want to play these bots go to sscaitournament.com and you can uh, find instruction how to uh, play versus bots you've got to install some uh, software packages it's all perfectly clear and well documented but they use quite a bit of RAM and the results are better. So we've got a bit of standoff going on here, it seems. We've got three zealots, it's saving more, and two cannons. You can take those if you engage well. Yeah, there goes the first cannon, there goes the sec. Oh no, they retreat. Oh well, let's not. They could have taken down that cannon and done some damage while the other zealots have rallied in, but didn't. While uh, Xynth is going for the expand, there are some more zealots coming up. I believe what is happening here. Zealot, zealot, zealot. Three gate zealot pressure. Okay, so it's queuing up some more. Um, about the University of Alberta bot, it is AI in so far that it runs a um, combat simulation. So it's got a build order, and next to that it runs a combat sim, so it says, well, we've got a 6-5 Zs for a dune and all that, and we've got 7 cannons, so let's not do that. Okay, we've got one more. What do we do now? Oh, we wait. Oh, we go. No, 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 no. Okay, we've got some more. We will move, we won't attack. And all the time it's calculating, well, can we win this? What are the outcomes? Can we do this? Um, I don't know the details, I don't know if it uh, takes into consideration if the probes would come off the line or whatever, but... Oh, here it goes. Here it... Oh no, it gets in two hits by the looks of it, and then backs off. Okay, pity. So, all the while, uh, Xim has an expansion going, and the University of Alberta has not. So this will start to get out of control because you can only build so many zealots of one base. And if there are many cannons, it will be harder and harder to break down because they have ranged fire. So this one can fire while well, here the attack is taking place here. But the second rank zealots, they cannot get any hits and so ranged stuff is in the advantage. Okay, so far so good. Uh, please don't attack while I take a look at uh, at the Sims base. What's it doing? It's attacking up. It's got a core and a pylon and ooh, a gateway. And this is where it gets interesting because we've got a bunch of cannons and in the second row and what is happening here this is just going to be pure zealot or it is saving up money. It's saved up 400 so perhaps we will we'll get an expansion. Oh, here we go, here we go. For Tassadar, one down. Oh, you just need to commit. Oh, no, 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 this is not going well at all. Perhaps its combat simulator should take into account losses while running into and getting out of it, because then it might either not run in at all, or stay the hell out of there. And we get more cannons. One has been killed, one has been critically damaged. And indeed, we've got the expansion for University Yacht. And... Oh, a core as well. So good. We are going to see some tech from the University of Alberta board as well. And some zealots will camp this. But I fear that whatever comes out of these... Uh, ooh, 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 and a gate. Whatever comes out of these gates will not be stoppable by zealots. And what got... Oh... Carrier, one carrier, okay. One carrier. Good. For those of you who have seen the round of eight and complained about the sound, which I hope is better this time, uh, Ximbot does basically a carrier strategy. So it walls itself in, ta da! And it will build carriers. Carriers, 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 and send them over the top to kill the enemy. And that has been surprisingly effective, because it did come in um, at number 2 position of 42 bots, which is very impressive indeed. So, all the while, these zealots dare not attack. And... good. Do we get a probe transfer? No, we don't. What is happening here? 
the money has been spent on buildings and nothing much else oh and probes it's still building probes yeah, it's good to have many probes but the first carrier is out and here we see um, plus one weapons for air and we see the advanced carrier capacity so it can carry eight instead of four interceptors so no I can't really tell much about this anyway it's just silly it's either do or don't but don't keep dancing in and out and catching foot on fire while Ximp is going for another expansion so it will soon be three versus two base and with three <laughs> hello what do you do with three probes here and you need gas and you need to build something because you've got a thousand minerals a thousand minerals and you're only and there are carriers too already oh god what a and some goons so even in ground army Ximp is catching up very very fast it's got a very good saturation oh and another couple of pot shots another two zealots die and it just keeps building probes that's so astounding if you can just program it you you don't need to spend attention on building probes so macro is something that is very easy for for bots once they've been programmed to do so it's not easy to program it into the bot exactly but if you've got it it will do it and it will do it every time <laughs> these probes they trying to get some well, what kind of weapons do they have they have laser particle beams <laughs> they get oh and the carriers come in too so yeah these zealots they aren't really in the mood and they, they, they decide to, to pull back even further okay so what have we got we've got the main which is nearly mined out and we've got oh god we've got a catatonic bot this happens sometimes uh, it's not mining gas it's stuck on zealots and it's not even doing that it's not even building probes anymore so this is a bit of a problem because Simp has one saturated base, a two saturated base and a three saturated bases and another cannon wall all the while all the armed forces of University of Alberta seem to be dead and we have got uh, four carriers with the weapons upgrade plus one entering the base and a bit of round army and it will so this one's frozen oh no it's building it's building probes again so apparently something in the script has gone wrong um, I know for a fact that it does like to mine gas and build tech units but something's gone wrong in the course of its build list or whatever and it's going going catatonic so let's speed this up a little bit because well what have we we've got one group of carriers and poof goes the nexus and the buildings and the Kakaru will survive oh good thing because I hate bots who kill critters oh, and we're going to get another nexus will be too late one two so these are four and another four so we've got eight carriers with uh, the weapon upgrade in the base no anti-air no enemy attack units whatsoever so they are pretty much uncontested and mining happily and they can't oh they need gas they got a lot of minerals but they haven't got the gas and another group of carriers is being built so this seems to be a, a victory for Xim. Pew pew, and there go the last two buildings of the main and now it needs to find uh, this little thingy here. It has got, if I am not mistaken, a pathfinding or a unit finding algorithm because in the air you do not need pathfinding. In Brute War all air is passable by air units so um, it's just a matter of time before some carrier group stumbles oh there it goes and there goes the last nexus 
And the second weapons upgrade completed. And Xim take the first game versus University of Orbetabot. GG. Okay. So, as said, these are all best of uh, threes. First one to win three game, uh, two games wins. And let's go on with the second game in the PvP uh, of Ximbot versus the University of All Better Bot. And we have in teal, my favorite color, <laughs> we have got University of All Better by Dave Churchill. And in the red by Thomas Vader from Slovakia, we have got Ximp with his very deadly carrier strategy. So, let's speed this up a little bit because, hey, uh, while we can... I told you everything I knew about these two bots. I could tell you a little bit more about the um, StarCraft AI tournament for students and other interested participants. If you visit sscaitournament.com yeah. Oh, let me type sscaitournament.com You can find out how to start programming. There are open source bots, there are guides, there are tutorials and... Um, well, you can have a look as to how to get into bot programming and you can also find out how you are to play against these bots. Um, I know for a fact that Icebot is downloadable. I have downloaded it myself. It is very fun to play against, only my current computer doesn't really like the further, uh, the later stages of the game. No, it is not Icebot. This is University of Better Bot. That is actually a bit lighter. Uh, some of the Terran bots tend to be heavier on the uh, CPU and the RAM because they like to make a lot of decisions. Some things are automated, like this. Mining, just going back and forth, it's all fine and dandy. But scouting, every time there's a course direction, it's a click. So it's a command. And that is just one unit. Imagine if you've got a 200 supply Terran, and you've got a couple of Vultures, a couple of Goliaths, and a couple of tanks, which all react independently. So it's almost like you've got a 120 units microed individually. Not together, they're all doing the same thing, or their own thing. And then you understand why it can be a bit of a pest on a, a low-level computer. But my PC being six-year-old, and it used to be an energy-efficient model back then, it's not the most powerful, and if you've bought a PC somewhere in the last five years, which is not totally trash, it should be able to run a bot. If you bought one in the last two years, you will, you'll be okay. It's uh, it's Starcraft Boot War game is from 98, so it's all fine and dandy. Should work. Okay, so here we've got the standoff, and oh. Oh god. I can't do a slash. Why can't I do a slash here? Mm. No, 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 no. Facebook, the group is called Brute War API, BW API, and uh, BW API is the API which is needed to run and code uh, these bots. It's a bit of a high-level thing. Some uh, aspects have been uh, standardized, so you can say go mine or go kill or attack move or whatever. You have, you don't have to do anything. And if you go to uh, the website sscitournament.com, then uh, you can look into some open source bots and some tutorials, so you get a bit of a feel what it's like to code a bot. It's not it's not easy. It is not easy. I, I'll admit to that. You need to have some programming skills. But as you can see, you've got a good idea, like this Tim bot, mainly to war yourself with cannons. And then send, uh, well, if it's going to do that, yes, it only does that. Let me tell its dirty little secret. You can just send carriers over the top. So if you've got a good idea, it's fairly easy. If, on the other hand, you want to uh, program a um, more rounded bot, like Icebot, and Icebot is the best rounded bot there is, uh, it's a pity we haven't got to see that. If you've got an Icebot on your hands, Icebot is programmed by a team, by a university team. It is very big, it uses some very fancy stuff. 
uh, it can use tanks, it can use battle cruisers, it use spells, it can, can it do lots of it builds bunkers. It has choke detection. It it can launch a decent attack. It is it is very fun. If you if you want to do, if you want to take one thing from this tournament, uh, you need to install uh, the Brute War API. You can see how uh, to do that on the uh, tournament right and uh, download the IceLab IceBot and it will be very fun. Just don't rush it like DetaBot did in the first semi-final game because it doesn't like that, it rolls over and dies. Um, I heard that the lead designer of that bot uh, graduated so uh, while we wait for news from Japan if that bot is being uh, developed still it, it could do with an early aggression detection. That would be really nice. Okay, so what have we here? We've got a zealot thing going on. Okay, so these things weren't warped in, they were built by the by the bot. And Xim is sitting back behind its its cannon wall and it is building one two four stargates and here we go. So, um while all this is happening, I must tell you something about the Zerg bots because in the round of 8 and the round of 4 there are... okay, if there are not any in the round of 8 there won't be any in the round of 4, there are no Zerg. And the main problem with that is that I like Zergs the most and they are so cute and so deadly. I am the biggest Jadon fan ever, uh, Brood War. In StarCraft 2 not so much because he's not as good. That makes me a, a bad kind of fan, but I'm I really was a I was a magic you and a savior fan as well because he, oh after the match fixing you couldn't it's a bit of a problem. But um we need more Zerg and there are some Zergs, there are quite many, but <laughs> the only thing they seem to be capable of doing is running a five pool. So if you want to code a bot, you can just uh, download a an open source thingy and copy a five pool bot, and you can participate in this tournament. And you can expand it from there, which hopefully, if you should choose to do so, you should do. On the other hand, there is one bot which does a very decent Hydra push. Imagine perfect macro five base um, Hydra Zerg. That is a scary thing. And there is one Zerg bot in particular I'd like to give a shout out to. It's from uh, Diveka, Marian Diveka, uh, which by the name I don't know for sure is either a Czech or a Slovakian um, student, which does a lurker thing. And that is so incredibly cute because most bots have a, a very, very, very hard time dealing with cloaked or burrowed units. And a three base lurker zerg is very intimidating because you, you need a lot of detection. And iSpot can deal with that. If you ever on the stream, uh, on the tournament website, there is a live stream. All bots in the bracket are playing random games versus each other. It's, it's glorious. Some of them have played thousands of games. But iSpot can handle that. And that is very, very good to see, but most bots can't. So that's a very good Zerg bot. It didn't make it because um, about 50% of the time the Vekas bot likes to crash the game. And you don't score many points with that. Okay, back to this one. We have got a uh, four carriers out mopping up the Zealots. Three bases for Ximp and University of Alberta is taking a third as well. Oh, and it is mining gas. How splendid. Good. More zealots streaming down, and please build some M. Oh yes, build a goon. Very good. There are goons coming out, and we had carriers. Oh, there. What are they doing? What are you doing, little carriers? What? Six, twelve. Oh, they've split them all very neatly, so they have got twenty-five kills combined. All zealots. But where are you going? Okay, the cannon wall holds. We get shields. A universal upgrade. Very good. What are you doing? What is this? Oh, it's a... Uh, it's an observer. Very good. But all the while, University of Alberta has taken its third and taken a fourth. And... 
has a lot of gas and not enough minerals. So what's it spending its minerals on? It's got a very very high saturation here, okay here, very low here, and while this is finished we'll have to see what goes on, we'll go on there, and no upgrades yet. Okay, well, oh, observer speed, oh that is, that is so cute. Good, what is happening? Weapons upgrades and any more carriers? Yes, another carrier. Oh look, they've they've flown around the minimap along the long route and they are about to hit this when it's done. No pity. In the meanwhile though, we've got quite a sizable army here doing nothing because I don't know. Either it decides it can't go in or it can't... it's gone catatonic again. And two probes have been chasing each other for all eternity. And there... oh, it's the first thing they attack, it's the core. So no more core, no more cybernetics core, and a core is a prerequisite to build Dragoons. So... bit of a pity, but no more anti-air. But there come the Dragoons. And one thing that was or is proverbial in Brute War is how hard it is to um, micro dragoons. These things are clumsy. If you take three of them and send them down a ramp they will choke 50% of the time. They'll end up walking all over the map except where you want them to. And they are attacking interceptors and carriers. Ooh, yeah, that one took a shot at a carrier. Which one? No, can't find it anymore. Oh, last. Yeah, this one. It's taken a shot. Good. But, overall, these Dragoons are not attacking. They are walking back and forth and taking a pot shot at an interceptor once in a while. All the while, these carriers take them down. And, oh, you see, this one was just building an interceptor. Oh, look, and there are their friends. So, we've got two groups of carriers and Oh, the core has been rebuilt, but University of Orbeta bot seems to have given up. And Ximp, the Red Protoss, is one game up already, so uh, if it wins this one it will move on to the finals to, fi to phase Elita bot. Okay, we've got some better saturation here. This one is all going fine and dandy. These goons, they keep not engaging, really or interceptors, which isn't all that much of a deal. And Ximp, natural almost mined out. Main is gone. The third is up and running. Fourth is there. Oh, you can just fly straight. It, there's an army here you can kill along the way. And the third is being rebuilt for University of Alberta, but, but Carriers are in the natural attacking the Nexus. It is it's not a good sign. The main is carved up. We've got some some pylons. We've got more pylons. All the gateways are attacked or down. And it seems to have gone catatonic again, but hey, what can you do? Normally you would type GG and leave the game, or rage quit, not GG, or curse the enemy and then leave the game, or disc hack, I don't know. It would be nice, but it's not really it's not really good manner to, to ride a bot which will <laughs> disconnect its opponent. And beside these matches have not been played on Battle.net, they have been played on a uh, private machine by the tournament organization and it would I don't think they would really enjoy having their server uh, thrown out by um Disk hacking bots, a uh, disconnect hacking bot. So if you lose, you try to crash the enemy computer, so it disconnects and you'll get the win anyway. But that isn't happening, and here goes the fourth. Goodbye. And now we've got a bunch of bunch of probes. Oh, it is still spending money on what? I don't know. And this is all it. Let's. Oh God, here get. Artificial intelligence taking the scenic route. But the fourth is up, probes have been transferred, they couldn't have all been built so uh, quickly, 
This one is going well, the natural is gone. Oh yeah, here the probes who were, who were mining here have been transferred to the fourth it seems. So that is a bit of a nicety by Ximp. Uh, let's see... That was the main. We've got two carrier groups in the main. And we have got one base here with a hell of a lot of probes. And we've got the army here. Just do something. Do something. I don't know. Another base, Voximp, on the just destroyed uh, fourth of University of Orbetabot. And here comes the death train. Last Nexus. Simp attacking the last Nexus of University of Orbetabot and takes the game 2-0 and moves on to the grand finals to play Litabot by Martin Royakers. Okay, so this was our broadcast. We have seen Litabot by Martin Royakers defeat Icebot by Icelabs uh, from Ritsumeika University in Japan, a uh, team effort by 2-0, so Litabot moves on to the grand, f grand finals and in this game we've just seen Xim by Thomas Veda defeat Dave Churchill's uh, University of Albertabot by 2-0 as well. So the grand finals will be Litabot versus Ximbot. And before we get to that we will have the third place match which is Icebot versus University of Albertabot. All the information you can find on the appropriate threads on Team Liquid, Liquipedia, and on sscaitournament.com or Facebook slash groups slash BWAPI. I thank you for listening and have a nice evening.